Maybe it won't. It's me again. So, anyways, I'm doing this sort of thing by recording on this app that makes it look like I'm recording from a VHS camcorder back in the day. Part of Tuckos. So, anyways, there's a, a reason why it had this sort of, you know, throwback aesthetic to like the, the 80s, maybe even the 90s because of the fact that I'm a, I'm a kid of the 80s and the 90s of that sort, you know. So, anyways, um, one of the things that I wanted to mention here, as far as that goes, is if anybody had remembered like those choose your own adventure books back in the day, you know, and where you, you can't really just um, read the book, you know, all the pages in order because there are certain things where if you want to go this route, you would you have to turn to this page. And if you go that route, you have to turn the other page of that sort. And then depending on how um, it goes, you know, then um, there's like different endings of that sort where it's like, where there's like the good endings and bad endings of that sort. Yeah. And so, I think there's a lot of video games that are like that, where you have this, where it's not really as linear of that sort, but you can choose whichever way you want to go in that, and, but there is some, like, um, I don't know what, what the term is, is where the state of being kind of linear of that sort, you know. But, but when it comes to like a game like Detroit Become Human, there is some aspect that is a bit, that there's some way of like where it's being linear in that sense, but there's all of like these different paths that you can take as far as whichever ending you want to achieve. Of that sort. Yeah, it's just like with um, any of these other games that are like that, where there's multiple paths, multiple endings that you can do at this point. You know what I mean? So that is kind of like what is there. And then there are certain games that that there is no real. Um, plot or whatever it is there, you know, it's like when it comes to like Sims 4 or, or any of the Sims franchise type games are like that where there there isn't really that much like plot there unless you want to do that and especially when there's like all these dating sim type games you know, where it's like and there are some of them that are like there for guys like me who just happen to be gay and or or even bi or whatever. You know. But for the record I'm just gay. And so that's the thing there. And in that whole story there, like like coming out on top or who's your daddy was another one of that sort. But, in a way, I had all, like, these options there, as far as who I could probably could do, like, a romance with, and, and the same thing when it came, like, Stardew Valley, you know, which is, like, that's another one that, that you have all these options with, you know. But the first game that I could recall that was like that was uh, Harvest Moon, was like that. 
and I didn't really care much for it there because it was like, even though I wasn't even out yet, so I kind of wish they, like, well, you can wish that, oh, you can play as a girl or play it, or romance guys or whatever of that sort, you know, because that was the kind of thing there. So, um, the point is, is when it comes to, you know, manifesting your specific person, so there's all these different ways, different branching paths that you can take from that specific person, you know, that you can go from, you can have this sort of the wonderful relationship with them, or you can have this most shitty, toxic, volatile as fuck relationship that you have with them, you know. And sometimes it's like, you know, people have like relationships that have a bad start, but end up getting wonderful relationships at the end, or vice versa. That sort of, and then of course, all these other little things, because I'm the type of person that believes the whole multiple, multiple timelines and that sort of, and I have said that so many times before about it, and I remember at one point where uh, where I had said that if it hadn't been for WW2, you know, my, my grandfather would have probably gone into boxing, you know, and then depending on how he, he would have be at that point in the time, you know, what if he would have been like, uh, like Oscar De La Hoya, maybe like even before Oscar De La Hoya was Oscar De La Hoya, you know, as far as that goes, and whether if he would be like a successful boxer or one that's kind of so so, or where he's just failed at at it, um, that sort of thing, and so that's just really like all the different paths of that sort. Because there's all these different paths that I could also take at this point when it comes to any of these guys that I want to be with, you know. And that's kind of like the the real proof of that matter is that I have all these options in front of me, you know, that I can have this guy or have that guy or I can have more than one guy or something like that because because on the other hand, I mean, I can do open relationships of that sort, you know, where I can have two boyfriends or partners or whatnot, or multiple of them or whatever it is. It's up to me, you know, and I don't really have to, like, you know, do all this sort of stuff. And it's like the case when it comes to, like, you know, the two of my main SPs of that sort, J1 and J2 of that sort, is that I can still be with J1, you know, it's not like he has to go back to Finland, you know, you know permanently of that sort, and, you know, because he can come back here at any time he wants to, and I don't necessarily have to live with him of that sort, you know, because he's allergic to cats and, and dogs, and I want to have a cat again after Garfield passed away, you know, as far as that goes. And as far as, like, when it comes to J2, like, you know, I didn't really have to do so much just to get, get this guy to become interested in me, you know, and I could just wait for, um, the whole thing with J2, you know, where he comes to terms with his grief of the loss of his late husband and the roommate with benefits as far as that goes, you know, and it's like what I said earlier at that point, it's, it's not like I actually really want J2 right away, you know, I just feel that he's, he's more of an option me if I choose that, you know, as, as 
far as that goes, because they have that choice of, you know, picking them back as far as that, out of every little thing that had happened so far, or I could just simply say that he's just no good, and no matter what way I would slice it, he's just, he's just a, he's just a depressed, you know, loser of that sort of seeking validation out, outside of his own self through TikTok and TikTok as a platform itself is just it's not gonna really last that long depending on how you would look at it in that sense because there are certain people that just want TikTok to be gone not simply because of um, security issues with China was one thing you know but merely it's just all these other little things that I wanted to talk about but then it doesn't really matter really so anyways talk to you guys later